We had a few more picked out, but I believe when the Holy Spirit is finished and says to go on to the Word, then we've got to be obedient, amen? We can just waste time and get up here and sing a bunch of stuff to be heard, but I believe when it's time to go to the Word, I believe that's where we need to go, amen? So um, we're going to do that tonight in the name of the Lord. Go into the Word, because I believe God spoke something into my spirit tonight for His body tonight, and I want you to get it, amen? I want you to receive it. I want you to be blessed by it, amen? So praise God for that um, awesome praise and worship service tonight, amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I needed that. I don't know about nobody else, but praise the Lord. Have mercy, I feel better. Yes, I feel better. Praise the Lord. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Numbers, chapter number 33. Praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 33. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Numbers 33 is where we'll be tonight in New King James Bible. So we're going to be reading. Um, we're going to start in verse number 50. So you flip on over to the end of the chapter. At the end of the chapter. We're going to start in verse number 50 tonight. Don't... Um, um, Hold your spot there. I've got a couple more places I'm going to go in a little while. We're going to go to Galatians, 1 John, and Colossians tonight. So we've got three or four places we're going to go. So um, this will be just one stop of three more. Amen? This will be one stop of four. So we're going to start in Numbers, and we're going to take a little journey through the Word here in a little bit. If that's the way the Lord has me to go. It's what's in my notes, but... Um, Sometimes notes can and sometimes notes do get changed midstream. So praise the Lord. Um, Numbers chapter 33, when you've got it, let's stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of the word tonight. Numbers chapter 33, going to start in verse number 50. Hallelujah. When you've got it, let me hear you say amen. It says, now the, Lord, now the word, now, hallelujah. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the, land, in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you've crossed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones, destroy all their molded images, and demolish all their high places. Look at your neighbor and say, It takes all of it. Got to get rid of it all. Come on, you got to get rid of it all. You can't leave any of it. You've got to get rid of it all. Amen. Destroy all, demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to possess. And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your, among your families. To the latter, you shall give a larger inheritance. To the smaller, you shall give a smaller inheritance. There, everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to your tribes of your fathers. But, look at your neighbor and say, but. But. I wonder if they've got a big butt. Ask them, say, you got a big butt? Come on, say, you got a butt? So you got a big butt? Everybody's got a big butt, amen? Everybody's got a big butt in their life, amen? Amen. Not literally, praise the Lord, quit looking and checking. But live, spiritually speaking, everybody's got a butt. Amen. It's a good part of the conversation to walk in on, right, sis? Amen. <laughs> but if you do not, uh-huh, look at them and say, you got to do it. You've got to do it. Amen. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall be that I will do to you as I thought to do to them. Look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Amen? Uh-oh. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, God, for this awesome service that you've blessed us with and God, your presence showed up and just, Lord, liber liberation in the house tonight. We thank you, Lord, for setting people free, God, for chains of bondage being destroyed. We thank you, God, for rejuvenating, God, the spirit of the preacher tonight, God, making, Lord God, reviving me. God, I thank you, Lord, for, for a spirit of revival, God, that we feel in this place, God, and this word that Sister Hannah brought tonight, this vision and dream, God, that she's had. Lord God, powerful, God, and awesome, Lord, proud of the mouth of 
of two, it'll be established, God. And we thank you for that, God, that she just confirmed the prayer that was prayed a few days ago. God, over the church and over the properties and over the people here, God, we thank you for that. And God, we thank you for establishing that, God, for setting that, God, for confirmation, Lord, for giving her that vision, for giving her that dream tonight. We glorify you. Lord, we pray, God, more and more visions come through more and more people, God, that you continue to work and let your Holy Spirit give them visions and dreams and signs and show them things, God, that you come, that's coming to pass, God. Lord, just the other day, Isabella said, Isabella, my baby, God even asked me, said, Lord, said, Daddy, when do you think Jesus is coming back? I'm glad the hearts of the children are looking for Jesus' coming. I'm glad that our children are looking for the signs and looking at the eastern sky waiting for Jesus to come back. I'm glad even the young ones are asking questions. When do you think he's coming, Daddy? I'm glad, Lord, that we've got a bunch of people in here, a bunch of children in here, a bunch of old folks in here, a bunch of people, God, in middle age, God, that are looking at the signs of the times and looking at the Spirit and for guidance and direction in their lives, God. God. Now continue to let your spirit be poured out, God. Give them visions and dreams and signs. Show them signs and wonders and miracles of all kinds, God, just by the words that they speak. And tonight I pray, God, that you'd anoint your vessel, God. Let this message be fruitful, God. Father God, anoint your messenger, God, to give this to your people as you would have it to be spoken. God, give this to your people, God, as you would have them to re- as you would have it be spoken to them, God. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would let them receive it as a seed planted in fertile ground tonight. We thank you and praise you. We give you the glory and the honor. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, "Uh uh-oh. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I thought about some stuff the other day in the time that we're living in the the, um, um, the state that our world is in the state that our country is in and the mess that we see all around us in society and in culture and in 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 general and what we see happening in the United States of America I was sitting the other day and as the as the tragic events in Boston the the horrific um, events that's taken place in Boston at the marathon and the young man that lost his life and all those people that were that were tra- that were just injured horrifically at the at the hands of two um, deranged individuals, two uh, sick individuals, um, all the lives that were that were just forever altered. Amen. As I looked at that, and then we looked at um, we we look at the stuff that's happened in Benghazi. We look at the stuff that's happened with nine eleven. We look at the stuff that happened with Timothy McVeigh. We can go all the way. We can go. We can go way, way, way back to to the to the. Um, the federal building that was bombed and was blowed up by the hands of a, of a madman. We can look at stuff that happened like in Waco, Texas. We can look at all this stuff that's happening within our borders of the United States. Amen. The land of the free, the home of the brave, uh, where where uh, where men are endowed by their creator with creator with unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. A place where we can come together as people and we can form and we can form a society that's not bound by kingships or dictators, and we have freedom to go to the house of God, of, of your choice. We can go to the Methodist church. We can go to the Presbyterian church. We can go to the Baptist church. We can go to whatever church we desire, wherever we desire, and we can freely worship. Amen. We can freely worship our God of our choice. Amen. Whether we agree with the God they worship or whether we believe in the God they worship, we live in a land where you can worship a God or whatever God you want to worship. Praise the Lord. I'm glad, though, that we know the one and only true God. Amen. Jehovah. I'm glad that we worship the one and only true God, Jehovah. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that I'm glad we I'm glad we serve a living God, not a statue God, not an image God, not a picture God, not a carving God, not a not a not 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 some sort of God, not a God that's still in the ground somewhere. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that we I'm glad we have that freedom. I'm glad we're not pressured into serving somebody that we don't believe in. Amen. But as you look at the events that's taken place in the United States over the last over the last several years, and, and and don't get me wrong, we've always had in this country, there's always been people that seek to destroy us and our way of life. Amen. The uh, the uh, the Muslims, the jihadists, and the Muslim religion do not like the Western way of life. They don't like the way that we allow our women to do, and the way we allow our women to have a voice. So we have our, we allow our women to have a a, a say so in what happens. They don't like that sort of stuff. They are they just that is one particular thing that they are really appalled by, and that really makes them angry is the fact that we allow that. They 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 look down at us as infidels. Amen. That we are that we are not chosen. That we are that we are enemies of their God and that we are enemies of, of who they serve. So their, their primary mission in this world is to destroy every one of us. 
Amen? Amen. Whether you agree with it or not, that's their, that, that, is their, that is their religion. It's supposed to be a religion of tolerance and love, but it's really a religion of hate and destruction. Amen? And they have always been out to destroy the children of Israel from the time that from the time that um, from from the time that um, Abraham done what he done and cast Ishmael and his mother out into the wilderness. There has been a there has been a a uh, a hatred, a, a man between Ishmael and Isaac. There has been a a strong hatred between them two. And now here we are, thousands of years later, still dealing with Abraham's mess up. Still dealing with Abraham's mistake. Still dealing with what Abraham tried to do within himself. And as I looked at this the other day, and as I looked at what, as I looked at what happened, we see a lot of folks that take situations and take things into their own hands, which we all do. We can fault Abraham all day long. We can look at Abraham all day long and say, Abraham screwed up. Abraham messed up. Abraham took it into his own hands, and look what happened. Listen, we are no different than Abraham. We try to take things into our own hands when God's told us to leave it alone. We try to take things in our own hands when God says, give it all to me. We try to take things in our own hands when God says, turn, cast all your cares upon me. We try to hold it. We try to take it. We try to fix it. We try to work it out. When God says, you cannot work it out, you've got to give it to me in order for it to be fixed. Amen? We look at all the mess and the recent destruction and the recent uh, heartache and stuff that's happened. And, 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 and for, unfortunately, the tragedy in Boston was the most recent one. And praise the Lord that, uh, that that they've caught the last individual the other day. That they got this, they got him, and 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 he can he can no longer cause any more heartache and pain himself. Amen. He can no longer do destruction. He can no longer take innocent lives. He can no longer cause anybody pain. He can no longer. I've seen images of the man running, uh, holding the artery of a, of a runner in his hand. While you look at the picture on Facebook, I don't know if all of you have seen it, but the picture of the runner in the wheelchair and a man in a cowboy hat holding his artery from his leg where his legs are completely blown away. You see those images and you see the videos over and over of these two men standing by the standing by the finish line, sitting with their backpacks on their back, setting them down behind the young little eight-year-old boy that tragically lost his life. You see this stuff unfolding before our eyes. You see this stuff happening all in America. It makes you it, it, it kind of puts apprehension in you whether you want to go to that ball game, whether you want to go to that car race, whether you want to go to that function, whether you want to go out and be part of a large gathering. It puts apprehension in you. Do I really want to do that anymore? Do I really want to partake of that anymore? Do I really want to get on an airplane? Do I really want to go sit in a ballpark? Do I really want to go sit out at, do I really want to go watch this race? Do I really want to go be part of this festival? Do I really want to be part of this gathering? It puts apprehension in you, which is what the enemy intends to do with every single attack. Not just in physical society that we live in today. The enemy of the, the enemies in the uh, in the in the Eastern world that's that's opposed to our Western way, our Western way of life. Amen. They're not just those enemies, but the enemies in our spirit. Man wants to cause us to have division and and I'm gonna preach it. Wants to have uh, wants us to have division and discourse amongst the body, so we don't want to go fellowship with one another. Amen. I'm gonna preach it. Listen. The enemies of the flesh don't want us to get together and enjoy ourselves and have freedoms in this world. They want us to be afraid. They want us to be. They want us to be bound up. They want us. It's just like after the attacks of nine, uh, the attack of 9/11. Folks were scared to fly. Folks were scared to get on an airplane. Folks were afraid. If you got on an airplane and there was someone of the eastern of eastern descent or eastern culture, you were afraid. Listen, the first time I flew, listen, I rode the tram at, at Atlanta at Atlanta Airport all the way to my terminal to get on my airplane. With a whole lot of folks from 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 uh, over in over in India and over in Saudi Arabia and Iraq, I was scared to death with their turbans on. I was like, Lord Jesus, the first time I've got to fly, and here are the folks that sent sent airplanes crashing into the Fed, crashing into the World Trade Centers. Lord God, if I had listen, I could have done without seeing this. I could have done without having to be look at that because the fear of the